thanks for doing this. Congratulations on the win. I, I know that this was supposed to be, you know, a learning camp and, and you had some goals. So what did you learn and did you accomplish what you wanted to accomplish? Thank you. Yes. So uh, there, are, there are a few things there uh, that I would address in terms of what we learned and uh, maybe something that we already knew, but uh, uh, it showed on the field was uh, obviously this was a strange year. Uh, 2020 was a, it was a tough year in uh, in many ways, uh, in many different ways we look at it. But uh, one thing that we learned that a lot of things changed in 2020. But one thing that uh, that didn't change and uh, one thing will never change with this team is the heart and the mind. And I was so proud of these players, the way they stepped up and handled the game. Uh, considering that uh, some of them uh, didn't even have a chance to, to train properly before this camp, uh, train on their own, or some of them uh, just literally uh, were on a treadmill uh, getting ready and uh, getting ready for this, uh, for this game, and then came in and um, uh, implemented uh, some, of the, some of the ideas that we had. Now, from the, from the tactical uh, standpoint, I, uh, I was very happy with the, with the performance and learned that, uh, that uh, we still have to, uh, have to do a little bit better in terms, uh, in terms of um, defending in, uh, in the middle block. I think that uh, we're incredible, uh, incredible anywhere around the, around our goal, around our box. We, I think the defenders uh, with uh, JJ in front of them and Alisa did incredible job. And uh, uh, other than that, uh, I'm uh, again just proud of uh, how uh, of uh, all of them and uh, how they did on the field. Thanks, Blake. Go ahead. Safe travels home. Yep. Thank you. Thanks, Kevin. Next, we'll go to Julia Poe. Uh, Julia, you should be able to unmute now. Awesome. Thanks so much for the time, Vlatko. Uh, Julia Poe from the Orlando Sentinel. Uh, you spoke before the game about how this was going to be kind of a, a testing period for Alex Morgan coming back uh, for her first game with the national team. How do you feel like that went, and what did you kind of take away from her performance in the second half? I think the uh, there, there, there are two pieces to Alex's performance. One, uh, she came in second half and was a good leader of the front line uh, on, uh, in and out of possession. And second thing, the, the second piece is the performance. I thought she did incredible. Uh, and uh, it showed, uh, obviously, she, uh, I don't know if she was offside or not on, the, on those couple of instances, but shows how dangerous she is and how little space she needs to, to score goals. So very happy of, uh, uh, of her performance, very happy of uh, not just performance, of uh, her uh, commitment to, to this team and uh, commitment to this game and uh, you know, just looking forward for, uh, for the future camps because uh, she's just going to go forward from here. Thank you so much. Next, we'll have Meg Linehan with The Athletic. Hi, Vlaco. Just, you know, I, last last week, really, you were just like, Christy Mewis is in this camp because she deserves to be in this camp. I was hoping you could uh, walk us through your decision in terms of how much time she got, and then also, obviously, her goal. I think I was actually at the last time she scored a goal for the U.S. national team at Foxborough Stadium in 2013. So. Uh, first, that the, you mentioned 2013. I have to say that in, uh, that in 2013 uh, was the year that I drafted uh, Christy Mewis, and uh, that was my first draft ever in NWSL. And uh, obviously, uh, very happy for her to see her uh, going through some adversity and coming back to this team and taking full advantage of the opportunity. Uh, she was very good in camp, uh, trained very, very well, and deserved to be on the field today. And the fact that she, she did as good as she did is uh, just uh, makes me uh, makes me very happy and proud of her. Perfect. Thank you, Vlaco. Thank you. Next, we have Steve Goff with the Washington Post. Go ahead, Steve. Hey, Vlaco. Thanks Hi, for Steve. your time. Thank you. Uh, what uh, what was your uh, what was your take on Rose's goal? Uh, especially when you see her lining up her left foot like that from distance. And what's the importance going forward of keeping her healthy after uh, she's battled injuries for much of her career? Yes. So one thing about Rose's goal is, is 
there, uh, it's not just uh, the goal that she scored and against a good team and gave us a lead. It's something that uh, uh, we spend, uh, actually, I wouldn't say we, our assistant coach, uh, Milan Ivanovic, uh, spent a lot of time with her uh, in, in, the, in individual session working on the, that exact move and exact shot in the same exact spot. And uh, the fact that she was able to, to soak up the information and, uh, and implement it in a game, in a game against an opponent like, uh, like uh, Netherlands, it just makes me happy because it uh, just uh, tells us how, uh, how coachable she is and as good as she is, uh, how, how much she still wants to learn. Now, um, I think Rose, uh, Rose is going to uh, be healthy, and I have no doubt in my mind. Uh, and uh, we're looking forward to, to have her in the next camp. Great. Thanks, Laco. Thank you. All right, next we have Seth Bertomi with Gold.com. Go ahead, Seth. Hey, Blacko, uh, Seth Bertelli, Gold.com. Uh, congrats on the win. Thank you. Um, just following up on Steve's question, um, how important do you think that goal could be for Rose in the context of her current situation at Manchester City, uh, where she hasn't been getting quite the amount of playing time that maybe we uh, would have expected going into her move? Yes, I don't know if I, I expected any, any more or less uh, with uh, her playing time. I think that... Uh, uh, she needed a little bit of time to adjust one thing, and then she had uh, she had a small injury going into it. So uh, that's why I, I don't know if I had any any, diff any expectations or different expectations. But uh, I think that uh, she's uh, finally healthy. She's playing well. She's uh, mentally in uh, in a good uh, good stage. And uh, the fact that uh, she scored a goal like this, I think, just uh, proves that uh, she's ready and she's a very good player. Thanks, Michael. Yep, thank you. Next, we have Jeff Kasuf with Equalizer. Go ahead, Jeff. Hey, Vako. Um, just wondering, from a performance standpoint uh, of of how you all performed and it being against you know the Dutch in a rematch of the World Cup final, if you, if you think that dominant of a performance, as least as it seemed from the outside, sends a message to the rest of the world after you know eight months off like this, where it didn't it didn't quite show. Yeah. Yes, so uh, I don't. I wouldn't say dominant by any means, uh, because uh, the we uh, the way we uh, tactically the way we uh, stepped up on the on the field, okay, we we allowed them uh, at times to to have more possession and to be more dominant. We picked and chose our time when we were high pressing, and I thought that our our high press was uh, was uh, very intense and aggressive. And uh, when we did when we did it. It was uh, very effective. Now, when we decided to stay in low block, is what the times when we allow them to be a little bit uh, more dominant, but uh, as uh, which we were fine with, as long as uh, they're not dangerous uh, to our goal. And I thought that we executed that part of the game uh, very well. And just quickly, uh, Becky with the armband, is that a circumstantial day thing? Is that is that something going forward? Uh, I don't. I wouldn't say uh, what what it means uh, for the future. We haven't discussed it. We haven't even thought about it. But uh, right now, I felt like she was the right person to to have the armband. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Jeff. Next, we'll go to Grant Wiedenfeld with Keeper Notes. Go ahead, Grant. Hi, Coach. Um, I was also going to ask about uh, uh, how you came to the decision for uh, Becky to captain this game. And um, just maybe maybe more long term, you know, what are you looking for for the leader of this team uh, and who's going to be the captain on the road to the Olympics? So we, we haven't discussed in terms of uh, who's going to be a captain, and that's uh, uh, as uh, important as it seems for me, it is not that important because uh, this team has uh, tremendous leaders. Some of them are in camp, some of them are uh, not in camp. 
and uh, they all take part in different ways. We have leaders by actions, leader by leaders by uh, by example, loud leaders, uh, different types of leaders, and they they all seem to do a very good job. I mean, you know, just uh, for one example, uh, one example I would say, Kelly O'Hare comes out in the 75th minute, and uh, she was absolutely the, the the voice from the bench and the one that was getting people going. That that uh, that uh, helped uh, helped us stay in the game mentally throughout throughout the the rest of the game. So uh, again. Uh, there's there's so many leaders with different qualities or different leadership qualities that uh, contribute to, uh, contribute to this team. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Up next, we have Jonathan Tenwald. Go ahead, Jonathan. Uh, thanks, Ilya. Vladko, congratulations. Thank you. Um, when we spoke in the days before the game, I know I asked you about about Sophia Smith, and you said you hope to have an opportunity get her a few minutes and you did and you got Jalen Howell on the field too and I wonder how how satisfying being able to do that was for you and what you saw out of them even in the limited time they were there yes I I was very happy very happy with, with both of them and the fact that we could have got them on the field uh, was uh, was great I think that uh, both of them are uh, very good players and uh, they have a bright future in uh, in front of them so uh, even when they were uh, when they were going on the on the field, I told them this is just the beginning and it's a start a start of uh, something new. So uh, we're hoping you know we're hoping to see them uh, on the field uh, uh, for many more times. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you. Up next we have Steph Young. Go ahead, Steph. Uh, hi, Blacko. Steph Young from Stars and Stripes FC. I was hoping you could elaborate a little bit more on something you said earlier about needing to work on the mid block. Like you said, the defending when they were dropping back around the goal was good. So what did you see from that, that mid block game that you think needs improving? And what did you see from that defensive work around the box that, you know, you thought was so good? Yeah, so so one thing in the in the mid block was uh, we we were able initially to to match their midfield, which uh, which I thought we did a good job. But uh, when uh, when they uh, dropped the the false nine, I think that threw threw us off a little bit. So uh, the, there's some a little work that we need to do there and how we can uh, overcome that. But uh, once we, once it came a little bit closer closer to our goal, uh, because we did not have to worry so much about the space behind. Obviously, in low block, there's no space behind us. Then we were able with uh, with the center back to solve that uh, to solve that issue. And uh, again, uh, if you uh, you know if you look at the game, uh, most of the possession that, that the opponent had was uh, when we were in the mid block. Once we once we got into low block, I don't think. Uh, uh, if they, they were able to get more than a few times in our box, which uh, made me very happy. All right, great. Thank yep. you. Thank you. All right, and for the last two questions, we'll give the second to last question to Alex Ozzy with NBC Sports. Go ahead, Alex. Hey, Blacko, thank you so much. Um, you spoke before about Christy Mewis and obviously uh, the long relationship that you've had coaching her. Um, I'm curious, um, kind of in the years between caps for her, do you think that for the previous coaching staff, she was unfairly excluded at times, or do you think that her exclusion from the US team is representative of her talent and potential to contribute at the time? I I wouldn't say there was uh, unfair ex uh, excluded uh, from the team in the past. Uh, obviously that uh, the team that was chosen uh, to compete in the, in the last five years did an incredible job and it proved that it was the right decision, uh, whoever was on the team and whoever was on the field. But one thing that I know about Christy Mew is that in the, in the last two years, starting 2019, the end of 2019 and 2020, uh, we see uh, a, a little bit of a different player, a little, uh, first uh, off the field, uh, a little more committed, to my, a little better, better pro, but then on the field, uh, uh, with her play, with her performance, she showed that deserve to, uh, deserve to uh, be around this group of players. And uh, if you look at the players that are in uh, in uh, United States or compete in the NWSL, uh, 2020 is Christy Mew's uh, year, and uh, I'm just glad that she kept it off with <laughs> with a nice goal. Thank you. Yep, thank you. And we'll close up with Sandra Herrera from CBS Sports. Sorry, before ahead, Sandra, Sandra before Sandra goes, 
Just in case people didn't know, Christie's, hey everybody, Christie's goal was the longest between goals for any national team player in history, 2,722 days between goals. Lloyd Kolopny was the previous one, 2,387. Back to Blackwell. There you go. <laughs> That's great. Uh, what a great anecdote. Uh, hi, Blackwell. Congrats hey, on the win. Um, with the last question, just uh, maybe to get an all-encompassing perspective from you. Looking back on 2020 as a whole, there was so many unpredictable things uh, that occurred in this year that were very, very challenging for you know all parties involved. Uh, in terms of your own personal extensive experience with NWSL and what they were able to pull off this year and sort of being able to combine these elements within uh, the national team, can you sort of speak uh, to that aspect of it and sort of what's next as uh, the Olympics are on the horizon for this team? All right. Uh, so first about NWSL, I think that maximized everything they could, could uh, and did everything they could have done in 2020. Uh, as a league and the teams uh, themselves, I think they did, they did an incredible job uh, helping the players stay in form uh, as as much as possible. Now uh, that definitely that helps us uh, as a national team, and NWSL has done an incredible job. I mean, needless to say, uh, ever since the league has been here, this team has won two World Cups, so definitely has a big uh, big impact on how how much. Uh, it means for these players and how much it helps them in the preparation for uh, big tournaments. Now going forward, I just uh, hope that uh, uh, everything goes as planned for the league because that will be important uh, for us. Uh, it will be important for, the, for our players to be in good environments, in uh, good training environments, good, uh, good playing environments uh, with a good logistical support because ultimately it will make a, my job a little bit easier. Thanks so much, Michael. Thank Good Thank you. Travel. All right, and Vlako, before we let you go, congratulations on having the best start of any coach in USWT history. That's 11 wins, zero draws, and zero losses. So congrats, coach. Um, thank you.